Good afternoon, everybody. I hope everyone is having a fantastic Wednesday. It is currently September 20th, 2023 at 3.13 p.m. Central Standard Time. How is everybody doing? I am not doing very well at holding up my end of the bargain with this channel, you guys, and I am so, so, so sorry. Um, life is happening. Life is getting in the way, and sometimes you just have to learn to roll with the punches. Um, as of today, Wednesday, uh, 9-20-23, I am halfway through the first week of my last college class for my associate's degree in medical administrative assisting, um, which is procedural coding for MMA and MOBS, which are um, EMR or EHR, so electronic health record or medical record programs. Um, my last course, which I discussed in my last video, was diagnostic coding. I finished that course with an A. So as it stands, I have 19, uh, 17 A's and 2 B's. Um, as it sits right now, my GPA is at a 3.0 um, or a 3.90, I think, is what, yeah, but a 3.90 when I looked. And if I finish this course with an A, so um, if I finish this course with an A, which I which I plan on doing, um, I will have seventeen A's and two B's, and a GPA of three point nine five, I think if I remember correctly, um, from what the screen said. But um, let's talk for a second. Um, mamas, mamas of girls especially, um, pay attention um, to your daughters when their bodies start changing. If you guys see me looking away from the camera, I'm sitting in my car like usual, but it's because it is... Um, almost 20 after three, I'm actually waiting for my daughter's bus to show up. Um, so mamas, pay attention to your daughter, especially when um, she starts her menses. Um, they can be quite traumatic. My daughter started her period um, at the age of nine. So we have been dealing with this for four years. And when she was 12 years old, um, she ended up developing an ovarian cyst on the left side that required surgical removal this past January. And ever since then, her periods, um, when she does get them, are quite painful. Um, to the point where I've actually had to, mind you, we're not that long into um, the new school year, the, the 2023-24 school year. Um, and I have, have had to go and get her from school twice already because they called me saying that she was in the nurse's office crying, doubled over in pain. Um, it turns out she actually developed two additional cysts that ruptured. So not only have we had surgical removal of a cyst, but we have had two cysts rupture. Um, today, I took her to a doctor's appointment, which, and I'll get to this in a minute, but I took her to the doctor, and we are going to get her set up with a gynecologist and I am making the decision to put her 
on to start her on birth control solely for the purpose of birth control can actually help decrease the size if not altogether eliminate the development of ovarian cysts um because as a mom as a mama i hate seeing my daughter my baby in pain it is absolutely gut wrenching to know that that is the type of pain that i cannot take away for her um I can't tell you how many nights I have laid in bed and listened to her cry while the pain meds kick in. Um, I, I, you know, obviously when you're on your cycle, realistically, the only thing you can do for pain is OTC. So ibuprofen or Tylenol and heat or cold packs. Um... And we're at the point now where I was told by her doctor today, instead of going for Tylenol or ibuprofen, go for Aleve. Um, It has the same effect as ibuprofen, but it lasts longer. And if the the Aleve, um, excuse me, I burped. If the Aleve, for whatever reason, wasn't doing its job to help alleviate, then we would talk about prescription strength ibuprofen. So this is where we're getting into the ibuprofen 600s, ibuprofen 800s. Um, As it stands right now, about the only thing that helps get rid of the pain is um, IV Toradol. Basically, it's um, hospital-grade IV Tylenol. And I don't want to keep taking her to the hospital and saying, please start an IV and administer Toradol to my 13-year-old because her period cramps are that bad or she has another ovarian cyst. Now, turns out with this last, with this most recent um, one, she actually has had two cysts, two cysts that have ruptured. Um, And I have had doctors look at me and go, she's too young for that. Well, I understand, but look at what the FDA is allowing to be put in the food and beverages that we consume on a daily basis. Um, so, mamas, if you are mothers of girls, especially girls around the 8, 9, 10 age range, Pay attention. If they haven't started already, they may soon start. I know growing up, my mom did not do the very best at explaining to me what was going on with my body and what that this was all very normal. Didn't really explain to me the different types of feminine products, so pads, tampons, panty liners. Um, When I was growing up and starting my period, um, menstrual cups weren't a thing. Um, Wearable, disposable underwear, like period underwear, were not a thing, which, by the way, I want to try because I am kind of fed up with having to go and change a pad every hour, two hours, depending on how heavy I bleed. Um, But growing up, the only, for me at least anyway, growing up, the only products available for women on their periods were pads, panty liners, or tampons. Now, I wasn't about to stick something up there at the age of 14. So I rely heavily on, I've used tampons in the past, but I've used them only in the occasions where it's like hot, 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 hot in the summer and I want to get in the pool or if I'm going somewhere where I have to be dressed up and sophisticated, then I will wear them. Any other given day, I am wearing either a pad or a tanny or a panty liner. Um... But the other thing I wanted to address in this video is, first of all, 
schools, I beg of you, I am imploring you, please come together with a consistent, cohesive, common sense dress code. Okay, especially if you're a school and you are in a southern state or a state that is on the southern end of the north of the country. Okay, I have been going rounds with my daughter's school <clears throat> over <clears throat> over the dress code. I have had to turn away pieces of clothing that were gifted to my daughter because they are not dress code or school appropriate. Um, now, mind you, my daughter doesn't go to school wearing anything skimpy, see-through, anything like that. She is the type of girl <clears throat> who would rather wear leggings and t-shirts or tank tops to school. But dress code for the school district states that they can't wear anything sleeveless. It doesn't even matter if it's like, <clears throat> now obviously something like this um, would be a no-go because, you know, my bra strap is showing. But my daughter the other day, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all, I'm a little bit hoarse. I was doing karaoke. My daughter the other day to school decided she wanted to wear shorts and a tank top and the tank top was one of those ones it was more or less I wouldn't even call it a tank top it was just like a sleeveless t-shirt had like the like the four finger width sleeve and she was told she had to wear a sweater um <clears throat> okay you got to realize, if you're a school in the south or the southern end of the northern states, so Kentucky, Tennessee, Carolinas, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, anything down there, Louisiana, it gets hot. And it gets hotter than Hades in the desert on the 4th of July. Okay, less is more at this point. <clears throat> Unless you want these kids overheating because they have too many layers on. Come together and create a consistent, cohesive dress code that makes sense for your region of the country and the weather that you deal with throughout the year. Now, in Kentucky, we've had days where in the morning, yeah, you're grabbing a... a uh, a hoodie or a sweatshirt. Th this is what I was wearing today. Okay. Thick sweater. Okay. But that was this morning. So between the 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. hour. By 10.30, I was ripping it off. And here I am in a tank top. I've got jeans on, but I'm in a, I'm in a tank top. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all, my bra is showing. This is a new a new blouse to me, so it's kind of... I got to figure out how to have it on my body to where it lays properly. Um, there we go. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's just schools. Do better when you're coming up with these dress codes. Look at what your weather's going to look like throughout the year. Okay? Realize that Mother Nature, she's fickle. She's going to do what she wants to do. Okay? Have your dress codes match your weather. Now, the other thing that I want to address, okay, that I'm having an issue with, and like I said, we aren't that long into the school year. And I've already had to go to the school twice because my daughter is being bullied and the school is choosing to call it quote unquote mean girl behavior. There is no difference between mean girl or mean boy behavior and bullying. Okay? There is no reason for these kids to be being mean to other students or classmates. There is no reason why parents should have to be going to the school or having conversations 
over the phone or via email or text message, however they do it, with principals and guidance counselors because kids don't know how to just genuinely be nice. My daughter is not one of those people that is going to start a fight, but you can better believe that my husband and I have given her permission to finish it. We have explicitly explicitly told explicitly told her, excuse me, that she is not to provoke, but she can and does have our permission to defend herself, whether that be verbally or physically. We've told her that yes, you will get in trouble at school. But if the punishment for school results in an OSS or out of school suspension, for those of you that don't understand acronyms, you will not get in trouble at home. Your OSS at home can be spent playing your your video games and watching YouTube or doing your cosplay. I'm not going to punish my child. Her dad and I are not going to punish our child for defending herself. Point number three that I want to make in this video. Under no circumstances does anybody but myself or my husband have the right to tell our daughter to shut up and mind her own business, okay? My husband, okay, like I told you at the beginning of the video, my daughter has been having issues with pain because of the ovarian cysts. In the state of Kentucky, you cannot just call up a doctor and say, I want this doctor to be, or I want to make an appointment with this doctor and I want them to be my PCP, primary care physician. You have to fill out a request, uh, a new patient request form. And then once that patient or once that physician agrees to take you on as a patient, you then have to go and file with your state or whoever your insurance is through, you have to file with them to get that provider's name put on the insurance card, okay? And it takes five, six, maybe seven business days, if not longer, depending on where you're at, for the card to arrive in the mail. Once that card with your chosen provider arrives in the mail, then and only then can you make an appointment to see that provider. That is why it took so long for my daughter to go see a doctor was because we were waiting for the medical cards that had the doctor's name to come in the mail. While we were doing that, my mother-in-law's boyfriend the other night took it upon himself, okay, we had given our daughter pain meds and melatonin. I'm just waiting for it to kick in because it's not an instantaneous thing where you take it and boom, you're not in any pain. No. Um, so we were waiting for the pain meds to kick in. And my mother-in-law's boyfriend comes, you know, flouncing through to his, you know, do, I don't know, do something in the kitchen. Um, and he looks at, my husband is sitting on the one side, on his side of the bed. I'm sitting on my side of the bed. And he looks at us and he goes, do you not hear your daughter crying? Do you not see she's in pain? Do you not care? Do something or I will report you for neglect. Okay, mind you, we had just spent the morning and the afternoon in the emergency room because she w woke up in so much pain, I couldn't send her to school. So we took her to the ER. They ran blood tests. They ran urinalyses. They ran ultrasounds. And what they found on the ultrasound was the two cysts that had ruptured. But 
they never prescribed her anything for pain. So I was doing OTC pain management. But for him to sit there and tell us to quote unquote do something to help your daughter or I will report you. And then when my daughter, who had had enough because she's in pain, and she looked him dead in the face and she goes, mind your own damn business, straight up. Now, mind you, this is a 57-year-old man. Straight up told a 13-year-old child to, why don't you just shut up? I have only ever seen my husband move that quick once. And the last time that he moved that quick once, it was while I was pregnant with her and I thought my water broke. And he, you know, and and the boyfriend is now salty because my, you know, my daughter's ignoring him, which she has every right to do. I mean, my God, they're... But 57-year-old's telling a 13-year-old who's in extreme pain to shut up when the 13-year-old is saying to mind her own business, you know, just you know, mind your business. Yeah, she's not going to accept an apology. And quite frankly, I probably shouldn't have either. My husband and I are at the point where we have told my mother, because my mother-in-law, love her to death lover to pieces but she's very flighty and doesn't like to stay home okay when we first got to Kentucky in April we were here for two days and she took off to go to Florida for th almost three weeks to do what clean a complete stranger's house okay when they, when she got back, she came back with a bunch of stuff from said stranger's house. And then started taking on the tasks of cleaning other strangers' houses. Now, when I say strangers, I mean people that I don't know at all. Never met, never associated with them. So the she's cleaning mind you she's cleaning she went down to Florida with her, fr her her girlfriend that she's known for like 50 plus years to clean that girlfriend's friend's house. I don't know this lady, I've never met her. I've seen pictures of her house because my mother-in-law takes it upon herself to take pictures of other people's houses and text them. Like she's like doing a, a service by showing the world what this lady is living like. I feel really bad about it. And I told my told the mother-in-law's boyfriend, you know, if it were me, I wouldn't want somebody taking pictures of my house. Outside, sure, because it's the outside, but not but not the inside where I got all my my junk and my stuff. Um so she comes back from Florida, that that two almost three week stint in Florida. And she's, she gets this job at this fly-by-night, run-of-the-mill. They really are not a very good company um, as far as following state policy goes, okay? Because I have worked in the healthcare field and I'm studying to continue to work in the healthcare field, I'm all about policy and procedure. And there are certain things you don't do, and there are certain things you have to do. And this company just kind of does what they want willy nilly. Um, so when she's not working, you know, ridiculous, crazy ass hours with this company, she's off cleaning other people's houses. Namely, the aunt of the her best friend's of uh, fifty seven years uh, son in law, and the daughter of the best friend of fifty seven years. 
Now, mind you, I've never met the aunt, and I've only met the daughter, I think, once, maybe. Um... But I, I sure as shoot have not been to the, their their houses, and I don't want to go to their houses. Okay, I, I I don't. But my 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 deal in saying all of this, okay, is I honestly feel like, and she hasn't said this in so many words, but I feel like my mother in law. Sorry, all my skin's dry. I feel like my mother in law expects my husband and I to clean up her house. Now, I don't have a problem cleaning up messes that myself and my husband and our daughter and our two cats make. Not a problem with that at all. But what I do have a problem with is when she has a grown son, 35, 36-year-old son, who will not shower, okay? He says he's claustrophobic, and the shower, which is a standard size tub shower combination, is apparently too small for him, and he doesn't shower. She's taken it upon herself to, and I probably shouldn't put this out here, but I don't want to sugarcoat or hide nothing. And I've got to vent this to somebody because the person that I... I've tried to vent it to, doesn't want to listen. It's like she refuses to listen to any negative commentary about her son. But oh my God, her, my husband or her daughter, you can, go to, you can go to her with negative commentary about them and she's all for it. But because he's the youngest of the four, nobody's allowed to tell her anything negative about him. So he won't shower. He doesn't shower. He doesn't wear underwear. He doesn't brush his teeth. He thinks that freshening up to go to a doctor's appointment or a scheduled appointment of some type entails taking baby wipes to yourself And spraying your clothes that haven't been laundered, mind you. Spraying your clothes with body sprays and aerosol deodorants. The only time that he physically will get himself in the shower and use soap and hot water to wash... is when he is higher than a kite on flipping marijuana. He says that he has a prescription from his doctor to use it. But if that's the case, why are you having to go out of state to get it? Why do they have to cross the state cross state lines and go in into Metropolis, Illinois? to acquire the 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 marijuana at first it was just gummies okay but then he progressed into it went from gummies to full-fledged you need a pipe to smoke it and it stinks up the entire space and you better do it outside um product It's not legal to purchase it for recreation or or, um, medical without a doctor's prescription in, in the state of Kentucky. And it sure as shoot is not legal to be driving across state lines with it. It irks me to no end, okay? Because part of the conditions, if you will, 
that my mother-in-law gave my brother-in-law for buying the marijuana was that he needed to start helping out around the house, inside and outside, and he, as well as taking showers on a more regular, consistent basis. And he hasn't. I think I've seen him shower once, maybe twice, and that is purely because he asked if anybody had to use the restroom before he took a shower. Because we only have one bathroom, we we are accustomed to asking other people in the house, I'm going to take a shower or take a bath, do you need to use the restroom? He's done that twice. Any other time? His idea of showering is just to wipe himself down with wipes. Um... I, I'm, yeah, I'm hot under the collar in this video because things lately have just been pissing me off and this YouTube channel is my out. I don't care if people don't like what I have to say. It's my channel. This is my phone that I'm recording the video on. This is my life. I'm not asking for your commentary on it, but I am using this as a way to let it out so that it does not fester. Because you know what happens when shit festers and just bubbles and bubbles and bubbles and bubbles and bubbles, and bubbles until you explode? That's what leads to mental breakdowns and hospitalizations. And I'm not going to put myself or my family through that. And when I say my family, I mean myself, my husband, and our daughter. So if you've got a problem with the fact that I use my YouTube channel that is recorded on my phone that my husband and I pay for, then you can just scroll and not watch my videos. It is not going to hurt me one iota. But I am not going to keep silent about the shit that is bothering me any fucking more. And yeah, I said shit and I said fucking. I am 37 years old. It is a free fucking country. And I will not be censored. I will see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully I will be calmer, but I will see you guys tomorrow.